Well, I'm back at the shop today, and I got a, a vintage trailer, 1982 Hilo here. The customer brought it in because it was um, leaning really bad to one side. Well, that was a pretty obvious uh, problem. When I take a look at this leash spring right here, it's all deformed. In fact, the lower is broken. So that wasn't too big of a deal. You got a new set of leash springs for it. But when I was taking this axle off, I got to looking at it. They had actually mounted it on the bottom of the leash spring. So it was basically an axle flip, which wouldn't have been really common in uh, 1982. So this is how it came off. I even marked this side R for the right side. But if we take a look at this axle, this is the front of the trailer. The holes for the uh, brake are on the front of the axle and that's not right. An axle normally has a crown to it. So it bends up. If I were to take a tape measure here, take a look at it right here I have I don't know we'll call that four and a quarter over here we have four and a half and four and a half so it's actually bowed down in the middle because they didn't flip this axle correctly if you even look at it you can kind of see how it bows down so this is a very common issue when you flip an axle, is uh, you think you can just flip it, but you can't. You have to weld on new perches. So first thing, that was more difficult than I wanted it to be. So basically this is how it should be with that bow going up. And uh, how the factory would have had it was, the leaf springs would have been underneath right here. When you flip an axle, you want to put the leaf springs on top. But obviously you have to have a new perch for that. Otherwise, if you just flip it, you've screwed everything up. So the next problem is if you'll notice, so these are on the back like they should be, but these brakes now are upside down. So that's the adjusting star wheel. That should be on the bottom. And that's the wires to the magnet. Those should be on top. So not only do I have to weld on new perches, I'm gonna have to put the brakes on correctly. So this was an awful lot of extra work. And these are newer brake pads that are brakes that are on here. You can definitely tell that these are newer. So I have to weld on those two, put the brakes, put everything back together, then I can put it back into place. So if you ever flip an axle, you gotta weld those on. Those are actually really inexpensive. All right, so I'm back at the shop here. I've got it all mocked up so you can kind of see what it looks like. <clears throat> the, I'm gonna have to weld this perch on right here. Then the leaf spring goes on top. And then of course the U-bolt would mount it all together. So there's the old perch that would have came from the factory. That would have been sitting on top here. Over here, you can kind of see it a little bit better. You just have to grind the surfaces right here. I'll weld this in place. It's just that perch and this perch just need to be the exact same spot, give or take. So I'll just measure off the old ones, weld it in place. It actually doesn't take a lot. Oh, you don't have to like weld this on like the, your life depends on it, even though I guess your tech life does technically depend on it. But this is just keeping the, uh, the axle from turning and the leaf springs from uh, uh, turning on the U-bolts. You can see it's just basically going to be a bead right around here on them both sides. All right, let me grind it off and weld it in place. So what I do when I'm welding these up, I'll use the old perch as a uh, as a place to uh, take my measurements off of. So I'll keep both sides in line with the old perch, and then I can measure the gap here. 
and the gap on the other side, and then I'll know that I'm square to here. I can use a steel or a rule or a straight edge too to make sure. And then it's also a good idea to measure the distance between this hole and this hole. Make sure it matches that hole to that hole. Well, I got marked up here, so I marked my location. It's about an inch and an eighth gap between both sides. So then I've also ground right there so I can get my welder on there. Which is nice once you get this thing tacked up. Just get one of them tacked up. This becomes a really nice uh, grounding spot for your clamp or for your ground cable when you're welding. So I'm just going to go ahead, tack it in place, weld it, and start building this thing up. Well, I just spotted these in real fast so I can do a quick measurement, make sure everything's good, then I'll weld it in. So don't judge me too harshly. Well, don't judge me too harshly. So they're, they're all welded up now. Now I just have to paint them. I let them cool off. I'll paint them, put the uh, springs into place. It's all painted now. The next step would be to normally put the leaf springs on, but I'm pretty confident I'm going to have to uh, flip these uh, brakes upside down because right now this is the bottom. Now it should be the bottom, but it is the top. So I'm going to have to open these up and find out if I just have to rotate these or if I have to swap them to the other side where the right might be on the left upside down, the left might be on the right upside down. And I could do that on the trailer, but without the leaf springs in the way, Look at all this room and access I have to those bolts. So that's what I'm going to do first. Alright, so I'm just going to pop this off. Take off the bearing and take the whole hub off and then we'll take a look at the brakes. So that nut should never be extremely tight because you don't want to compress your uh, bearings. <laughs> Let's see how we do here. So we have to jiggle out the uh, external bearings and washer. These look pretty good. So, we're calling that right hand. So this is the top, and this is the back. So this should be right hand. It's just upside down. The magnet should be on the bottom. So just have to rotate this around. All right. So those nuts are off. I should be able to take this off, rotate it around, get the wire out of the way. Keep the wire out of the way. All right. So does that look right to me? If I was a wheel and I was spinning forward that way, this magnet would grab it and push that forward. So I think we're pretty good. Right hand on the right hand. So this is the top, this is the rear, that's where the wire is coming out. Fantastic, and yeah, I mean, like I said, this is a pretty new uh, braking. So I just have to put this back together, flip that one over, put the leaf springs on, and put it back in. All right, so I did actually have to take this off because it's kind of a dummy. Yeah, even if you take these bolts off, or the nuts off, the bearing that's going to keep the whole assembly in place. But both of them are now flipped right side up. You can kind of tell how everything's supposed to be now. So, wires will come out the front and the back, and back of the axle, or the front and, and the top of the, uh, sorry, the back and the top of the uh, backing plate. So they would line up together. So water, obviously, when you're driving, wouldn't be driving into the axle there. And so that's on the rear. And this side's on the rear. So, that's everything it's supposed to be. Now we just have to put the leaf springs on. 
So I'm back to getting the leaf spring on there. So there's a uh, a bolt on the bottom of that leaf spring that fits in the perch, the hole in the perch. Make sure that's all good. When we tighten these up, we want to tighten these up evenly. You don't want to have a whole bunch of threads on this side and just flush on this side. So we want to keep the uh, the threads pretty even as we're tightening this down. I do like to keep this uh, band to the front. I'm not sure how vital that is, but that's how the factories do it, and I like to try to keep it as factory as I can. So just put these on, then I can move this back in place and hopefully get done with this. Well, there they are. You can kind of see how even the tops are. These should be torqued down to about 75, 85 pounds. You want to make sure that the, uh, the bolts are fairly uh, straight. And we're sitting flush on the perch. And then as you're tightening it, I try to do it like a, a star pattern or a cross. So I'm doing it evenly because I don't want to tilt it one way or the other. Well, I dragged it back over here. So now I just have to put it into place. I believe uh, that's going to fit in the hanger up there. And then there's a linkage or a hanger or a shackle, whatever you want to call it. Right there. So those go back there. So I normally just put a jack in the middle and jack the whole axle up at the same time. Obviously you don't put any pressure on it, it's just supporting the weight, or supporting the axle as you manhandle it. I may have forgotten to tell you guys, it's always a good idea not to tighten these up until it's uh, completely installed because you want a little bit of uh, movement so that you can line up those hangers. So then I got that bolted on all these other bolts on i just got the last uh leaf spring and shackle to put on then tighten everything up Well, we're all back down on the, uh, the suspension. I can tell you, looking at it, definitely looks a lot better now. It was really tilted pretty bad. I was thinking it was about two inches off. So I measure this out now. About 18 inches there. And about 18 inches here. So I'm going to call this good. Looking at it. From here, let's see. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Looking at it from underneath, that look a lot better. Not nearly as flat as they used to be, especially this one on this side. Well, all right, guys, there, there it is. Really easy job. I don't know why it took me all day again. Uh, don't forget, we want to tighten up the. Uh, the lugs on this about 10, 90, 95 foot pounds and have a safe travels. Thanks a lot.